told my mother that I would be leaving the United States. She's not young anymore, and my father is dead, and we're very close, that I would be leaving the United States to come here. I expected her to, to make objections to this. But there was silence on the phone in silence, and finally she said, Look, you were born a Jew, you became a Catholic, and you took your degrees in the story of Islam. You have got to go. <laughs> you have got to go there. That is where you have to be. One thing that people notice when they come here are the divisions. Are the divisions, you know, and certainly they're right. I mean, I mean, look, these divisions dominate life here. That brings out the other side of the coin. What is it that the tension of this division is felt and noticed only because of what is being shared? The tension between these histories and peoples is noticed and felt only because of what is being shared. And what is being shared is this land. It is precisely what unites us that also divides us. And it is precisely what also divides us, what also unites us. It's this tension. Who can live this tension? You know, someone asked me just yesterday, we were together in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the church that covers the both the place of Jesus' crucifixion and his burial and resurrection. And we were noticing walls that had been built precisely within the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in order to separate out the areas of the different Christian confessions, the Orthodox, Catholic, Ar Armenians, Coptics, Ethiopians. And, and I said, you know, these walls, which are walls of division, are also walls that permit us to share the same place. Because these are the people who've experienced Jesus Christ in whom all things are fulfilled. The one whom, as St. Paul said, has broken down the walls of division. This Saturday is the Christmas children's party in the parish. And the Caritas of Jerusalem wants to give gifts to all the children. But the question is how to get the gifts there, because transportation between Nablus and Jerusalem directly is is not for everybody. Only a few people have permission to do that with their cars. Abdullah, how you say Shukalata? Abdullah. Abdullah, yes. Zatallah. Okay. Okay, okay, now, now, 
اوكي ما تخل من من تحت اوكي شكرا From my mother and my father To my brothers I'm turning With this storm In my head With this storm In my So I know who I am. We had a meeting with the patriarch today, and and he said, you know, this Vincent, he's an adventurous guy. He always says yes and takes off. <laughs> I don't know. I remember the after my first week here, the patriarch. He asked me to go to go and begin to take care of the Catholic parish in Nablus. It's in um, the Catholic area, well, not just the Christian area, but where the Christians live in this area. It's called Rafidia. There's a Catholic parish there. Nablus is a city where you can really see the results of the violence, uh, the lack of public law, the where there are gangs and clans and obviously clashes between the Israeli soldiers and the people against the occupation. We are in Nablus. Entrare in una città come questa è già un primo problema. La città è assediata, questo significa che le strade d'accesso ed uscita sono bloccate dai militari israeliani che controllano in maniera molto scrupolosa tutte le persone che vanno e vengono. La, la città ha 120.000 abitanti, la comunità dei cristiani qui dentro è molto piccola, conta solo 750 persone. Le famiglie se ne sono quasi tutte andate, eh, c'è una grossa comunità a Santiago del Cile, altre negli Stati Uniti. Quindi vivere qui da cristiani non è facile. Ieri un cristiano mi diceva, eh, padre, qui noi per i musulmani siamo cristiani e per gli ebrei siamo arabi. Che cosa possiamo fare? Uh, I, I was against always the Christian immigration from here abroad. Because if all the Christian leave, then uh, it's a museum left. When, when, when we came back, all the people said you are crazy. Even exactly. Jewish people, yeah. which I work with, say you are crazy. You had a job in England, uh, you had a wife from Europe. It's uh, something unreasonable. Isn't it? But I think, as you said, what's the meaning for, to be a Christian in this Holy Land? It's that you don't throw your cross away and say, I don't care, I want easy life. You don't throw your cross away. Don't throw, you must carry your cross. Because God has given it to you, huh? He's given it to you in love. We live in an Islamic village. We live in a Jewish state. And we must live as Christians. Well, God is at work. The Jesus is at work through His Spirit and through those who say yes, huh? So we will help each other say yes, okay? Vincent uh, mi raccontava che pur avendo cominciato a venire qui a Nablus uh, solo tre mesi fa, sta già uh, crescendo in lui un grande affetto per questa città comincia ad entrare nella vita delle persone, comincia a crescere in lui l'ammirazione per quello che vivono, per come lo vivono e questo eh, genera in lui affetto per questa città. Penso che questo affetto sia il contributo che noi possiamo dare. From the dark earth through a tiny crack. Siamo 
siamo stati a trovare le suore di madre Teresa. Loro ci dicevano che da quando Vincent è qui eh, le, le persone stanno ricominciando a trovare il gusto di tornare in chiesa. Rivedere un prete che entra nelle case, rivedere un prete che si occupa eh, delle storie delle persone ha di nuovo incoraggiato la gente a tornare in chiesa. Vincent è sempre preoccupato perché il suo arabo non è così fluente, almeno come lui lo vorrebbe. E eh, tante volte ha detto che durante le prediche è la gente eh, che deve intervenire dalle panche a suggerirgli le parole, però lo fanno seguendolo con molta attenzione, anzi forse proprio questa difficoltà di comprensione accentua in loro la tensione a capire ciò che quest'uomo venuto da così lontano, venuto dagli Stati Uniti, vuole loro portare. Ieri abbiamo partecipato con lui ad una cena in casa di cristiani e mi ha colpito molto vedere come da subito, anche rischiando un po', Vincent ha tentato di eh, scuoterli dalla scontatezza con, con cui anche qui si può vivere il proprio cristianesimo. Se noi non diremo mai niente, ha detto ad un certo punto, non eh, proveremo alla fine più niente, non crederemo più niente. È come se un marito non dice mai a sua moglie quello che ha nel cuore, quello che prova per lei. Alla fine non proverà più niente. As the sun goes down The stars come out to shine And they shine so bright On you about Christ, but there are days where a voice, I can hear it, it says, are you really sure? I don't know. I, I don't know if it ever happens to you. Certain days there's a voice that has a certain accent that it's commanding. It says, are you really sure? But even if there are all objections possible, betrayal, really horrible, ugly, terrible, disgusting betrayal. But nonetheless, even after all that, even after all that, there is that untiring, constant voice that remains even from those depths of betrayal. And it says, well then, what? Follow me. And at that point, you know, and at that point, oh, you gotta ask yourself, You've got to ask yourself, um, so what's the really reasonable thing to do now? It's, it's only to say okay and start following. Because there's nobody else who invites us with an invitation that really does convince us of love and, and truth. storm in my head with the storm in my head with the storm in my head So I know who I am 